And I think Philip has done a great job making sure um, he does his due diligence. Um, let's get into uh, your and daughter. my wife. And and my wife. I'm sorry. Yes, do not want to make sure to keep adding that. Absolutely, absolutely. And these, I do not want these miss backgrounds. It. My wife is a um, is yeah. a is an internal auditor, or accountant. Yes. So she definitely helps to cross the T's and dot the I's on so many things that I that kind of is more of an extrovert. Or, but yeah. Uh, Absolutely. It's not going to be thinking about. So I. Oh, yeah, for sure. We did not want to because it's a family owned business. Yes, sir. You know, it takes a it takes a a wife that can be able to hold it down, taking care of the family, Mm -hmm. still run the business and do everything she does. So she deserves a ton of acknowledgement and credit. So we will make sure we do that. Um, But to get actually speak, continue to speak about the family. Mm -hmm. um, I follow you and your daughter on TikTok. Yeah. And. Most recently, you guys did a TikTok where you were. Um, I'm not sure if you were here. You may have been here. We, we were. We okay. Were right yeah. over there standing. Okay, there. gotcha. Uh-huh. And you guys were um, showing how you make the products. Yes. Uh, and I just wanted to see if you can touch touch on that a little bit because yeah. it was great to see um, your daughter involved because mm-hmm. um, obviously, you know, she's what inspired. She's got to earn her, her paycheck, people. Yeah. And we're I, about to get into something exciting yeah. after he says, tells it. <laughs> you know, I mean that literally. So. <laughs> Um, the purpose of this business, along with, you know, being able to, uh, help the community and provide these amazing products, um, you know, we're all about building long-term generational wealth wealth. Yes, and you want to be, be, you want to put yourself in a position where you can make money while you are asleep. Yes. Having a company, having your website set up, um, having your social media presence, um, taken care of. That's putting yourself in that position. And now how does it affect not just my oldest daughter who was able to help me, but my three year old daughter and my 11 month old son? This business is theirs. Yes. It's not mine. My job as a father, as a parent, as the covering for them is to work for them. I get up and I go to when I come to work, they know that they're my boss. I'm working for them. I'm working to ensure that um when i leave this earth that whatever day that is that god calls me that i'm leaving them something tangible yes but not just leaving them the 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 assets teaching them how to run it and how to run it properly absolutely so i've been around uh at an early age yes wow i've been blessed to, to to be around several amazing uh mentors and, and individuals throughout my, my life. So I've, I've had a front row seat right. in terms of how they operate businesses, how they, you know, set things up for their children. Right. So, you know, uh, I, I was with an organization called Memphis Gridiron Ministries uh, back in Memphis. They, they use football as a way of yes. um, helping young men to just learn how to be amazing young people throughout their their lives. But within that organization, um, guys like Wade West, Walker Hayes, uh, Greg Wilkinson, uh, Rusty Linkus, uh, Burt Robinson, the name goes on, uh, Sean Cobb, they taught me how to uh, run a business in a sense because I was sitting there watching them because these are all all, all men who I respect greatly and I used to watch them run their companies and I used to watch their kids as their kids are growing up. They'll be showing their kids how to do X, Y, and Z. But then also like sometimes during the summer, their kids show an interest in wanting to, let's say you are an accountant. I'm a lawyer. Right. If, and you want to show your kid the business of accounting. Um, But your kid decides, Hey, you know what, dad, I'm interested in learning about being a lawyer. Guess what you'll do? You'll reach out to me and you'll say, hey, can they come intern for you right. for a little bit during that summer? Absolutely. And I watched those types of transactions happening. Yeah. And I was like, OK, that's part of the secret sauce. Absolutely. Teaching them at a young age how to, you know, do a variety of different things. Um, Fred, Fred Taylor uh, on the, the pivot, he always talks about exposure leads to expansion. Yeah. So that is my goal. Like even um, earlier today, our daughter was doing her homework. They had a uh, flexible instructional day, a fit day where they do, uh, work from home. Right. 
And uh, I saw her, you know, kind of typing and things like that. I was like, we have to sign her up for a computer class. Absolutely. Because yeah. during the summer, you know, part of the world we live in, technology is going to be huge. Yes. So let's sign her up for that. Let's get her a leg up on those types of things so Absolutely. that she can then be better prepared for the world that's going to be out there. Yes. Now, if she decides, hey, I want to be in skincare. This is what I want to do. Guess what? Sherry would know how to do it. But if she decides, hey, I want to go towards the financial side of things, we would have already taught her how to do that. Absolutely. If she wants to be an, an accountant, my wife would have already showed her that, along with our other two kids as well. So doing those things, exposing her so that when she does pick a specific path in life, yes. it's one that she's been groomed for and she's well prepared for. And that goes for all of my kids too. But then also knowing how to run this, maybe this becomes a side business for, the, for them. Maybe we've set it up in such a way that it runs rather autonomously. Yes. And all they have to do is just look at things from a high level Correct. and be able to bring uh, different ideas and topics into Nabakindo to continue to further the overall vision of Nabakindo. But that's bringing them in residuals on a monthly basis, yearly, yes. whatever you want to call it. And that's but, true. But then they, world. but then they have yes. whatever their main specific niche is in their lives. Yes. So just being open to those ideas is kind of the the the, the mindset, and I guess that's how the financial literacy with TC piece it ties, ties into, into this. all of this overall vision. Preach because it, yes. it's not just <laughs> oh that guy with the company that makes skincare. No. It's well beyond that. It's thinking you know, eons ahead yes. in trying to equip our next generation with these types of ideas and this type of mindset that will propel them to be forward thinkers and forward leaders. Honestly, man, well said, because when you think about, and I'm, I'm, I'm from Pittsburgh and I've been here my entire life and I currently see the landscape of, mm -hmm. you know, yes, we have more entrepreneurs, um, as Arthur Robinson said in a previous podcast episode, we have more entrepreneurs than ever. Um, but one of the things I haven't seen or I don't see enough, if it is existing, is small business owners allowing their kids to be a part of the business yeah. and taking it a step further than what you said. You actually are paying your children into an IRA. Yeah. I'm going to let you just talk about that a little bit, because like you said, this is the financial nuggets mm -hmm. of financial literacy with TC is being able to take an individual who looks like us yep. and be able to get concepts and strategies. And I couldn't have said it better myself. Obviously, I don't have children yet, but <laughs> and I, you know, I'm blown away by the ability that you and your wife, an example you set, because mm -hmm. generational wealth is the ultimate goal. For and sure. you guys are well on the way of making sure that this triculates down the family lineage. And um, so I just wanted you to, if you, you know, as yeah. much as you care to share about how not only are you building your daughter, your daughter's vision and you know her pathways to life, mm -hmm. but you're also making that financial commitment by what you guys do um, pouring into, you know, the IRA perspective. Yes. Um, and you, you mentioned something that, you know, you haven't seen a lot of folks in, in the area doing it. I would say um, the other person that I've seen um, doing it is her name is Candace Rice. And she owns. Yes. Shout out to Candace. Um, she loves collection which you can actually find here in our stores amazing yes. young, young lady she makes uh these um you know the, these handcrafted bracelets. bracelets and she's always you know at a lot of a variety of different events with, with her young son mason yes so great mother want to you know give her a shout out and yes my wife loves her yeah. bracelets by the <laughs> and, way and, and, and she's the one that, that i know yeah. so that's why i mentioned i'm sure there's more people but there's, i'm sure there's more i don't yeah. know them so i apologize i'm not trying to offend anyone but um from the financial side for my daughter you know i was and Please speak to your financial advisor, advisor yeah. banker, et cetera, about this uh, stuff, because I can only share the piece that my um, accountant has educated me on. I'm certainly not the expert. Yes. But, um, you know, one of the things that, that she she always my accountant always talked about um, is, you know, being able to find additional ways of, you know, not getting taxed. Yes, that's kind of where um, that came from. And I, and I thought to myself, I said, well, you know, my, my wife and I, we, I said, well, you know, um, I see sometimes people pay their kids. How do we do that instead of just, oh, here's $20, here's 50 bucks right. for doing X, Y, and Z. 
So oftentimes, you know, if you come to the store on the weekend and things like that, you'll see our kids here. Uh, or if you follow us on social media at Nabakino Skincare for all the all the different um, platforms, yes, you'll see you'll see our kids featured on those things because that way, one, it allows me to say, hey, my child is set up as an employee for my business. Yes, and we are an escort, by the way, if that helps anyone out we originally were an llc but as we begin to continuously grow yes. we uh switched over to an escort yeah. but paying our child and i think you can pay up to either six thousand or seven thousand into an ira per year yeah Correct. per year for uh for kids under i think 18 or, or something like that Correct. so that's what we try to do try to max it out so that they have money later on um additionally um getting something called um iul uh index universal life insurance yes. so getting those types of things and pour into it for your kids would be helpful um and then having them on payroll uh by having them on payroll i i think the number just went up in 2024 2023 yep, we to where it's like 13.5 five. you can pay them up to that amount Correct. and these are all things and forgive me if i if i say incorrectly these are all things that from a tax standpoint, it reduces your tax liability. Yes. Meaning that the, this is money, this is funds that you will not have to, to pay, pay back. Taxes. Yep. Or, or you will not have to pay taxes, taxes on. on. Sorry. Yep. <laughs> so by by you know sort of just delving into the financial side and asking myself, well, what are some things I can do? I can go I can go buy this, buy this asset, buy that, and that might might be a write off, but what about the asset at home? Correct. What about my three children that I say I'm working hard for, that I'm trying to um, enhance their financial future? Yes. So that's where that mindset sort of came from. This is not something I was born with. As, I, as you mentioned, I'm first generation, generation American yes. um, in this country. So these are not things that I knew. Um, and most of it, I've started. I started learning probably at age 25, 26, right. um, like a little bit after college. Right. So just delving deep into that and, and trying to figure out as a as a business owner, or even if you're not a, a business owner, what are some things you can do to enhance the financial future of yourself and that of your children? Sometimes it can be a, as little as putting aside. Twenty-five, fifty dollars. Correct. A lot of you go to all these different places for lunch, breakfast, you know, coffee. You can step away from that for one or two days and take that money and say, you know what, I go here five days a week. How about you go three days a week? And the two days you don't go, those are that that ten dollars for that month. That's twenty bucks a week or eighty dollars per month. Yes. That now you're putting it away for your child. Yes. Just doing those types of things there to enhance not just your future, but the future of your child. Because I know, you know, oftentimes in our, our communities, too, one of the things that I've seen happen, I know it's not uh, constant for every household. But, you know, when that child becomes 18, it's kind of like, OK, you're on your own now. Right. But have we equipped them to fully be Taking on their own? Themselves. Correct. We have not. A lot of times right. but by doing these little things here uh and putting everything in place we can now when we send them out of, out of, out of um our, our houses we right. can now say you know what i'm confident that this person at least has a bigger leg up on life than i did and that's what i'm continuously trying to do along with my wife we're trying to ensure that um whatever path we were on when we you know exited college you know that our kids when they start life if we were here our kids are here let's propel them further than what we were so that they can end up here and then the next generation next generation and they can come back and say you know what it started with dad moving to the united states it right. started it started with mom and dad creating a foundational piece called navakindo skincare yes. it started with them making sure i have an IUL that I can now borrow money from, uh, you know, that I, I don't have to pay back or they have an R IRA set up for me and they have all these different things here. Right. It started with that. So one of the challenges I always tell people is 
what's your it started with right. for your family, for your kids and for that next generation and to make sure we're doing those things. And I love the way you said that because um, one of the things I always uh, keep in the forefront of my mm -hmm. mind, it's not about the money you make. Yeah. Money comes and goes, we all know that, but it's about the money you keep and how you are able to leverage it. Yes, sir. Um, you know, being a part of the 1%, 3%, yeah, you hear about it, but a lot of times is I spend a ton of time trying to be around individuals like yourself, my mentors, people I look up to about understanding the, the game that essentially is going on in the finance world is <laughs> um you know how these people are part of the one percent three percent whatever you know it's how they're taxed and yes. it's the loopholes and all the different things that they are able to do so that way the money that they've made isn't being heavily penalized or taxed based on you know and it's really just about understanding the game and knowing it so if you have not considered um having a financial advisor having some an accountant um, you know, I got three financial advisors. Yeah. Um, one of them, I, you know, is paying, but two or three or four of them are friends. Yes. And it's really just about, about and I just did a workshop about um, having, who do you, you know, talk to about money? Mm -hmm. Obviously, I did an episode with my wife called Budgeting While Married. Obviously, I talked to my wife, but then there's four or five other people that I trust and have relationships with that I talk to. Okay. And people in my workshop, I raised, I asked that question, who do you talk to about money? And all we heard was wife and girlfriend. Mm hmm only three people and i'm like so how can you ever be better at how you manage your money yes. if you don't have someone who <laughs> can teach you or educate or you could bounce ideas off strategies concepts thoughts if you don't have someone like that in your life then how are you ever going to be better yeah. at managing money and you know it's a game of assets correct. and you have to eventually learn to trust someone someone <laughs> um and i and, and i think you know in, in our society we don't we don't our community yeah. We don't we don't do that as much because a lot of people you know you get right, burned rightly you, so right yeah, you get burned they, they and get burned. Is, so yeah. they automatically <laughs> assume like hey everybody's like this so I always you know say hey at least try to find one or two people right that you can bounce ideas off of because that way you get differing opinions or differing mindsets that yes. you you take the key pieces of information and now you formulate your own that works for your family your life. You know, it's about adaptation. Correct. At the end of the day. For sure. And at the very least, wherever you keep your money at, the financial institution you bank at, make that person, if all your institution, and I always say this, if all your institution does is hold your money, you're doing yourself a disservice yeah. by banking there. Or because the goal is for you to have a relationship with somebody that can elevate your money, help you make yeah. more money. Like that's the whole purpose of the institution. Yeah. A wall safe can hold your money. Yep. <laughs> a little lockbox fireproof can hold your money. <laughs> <True>. <laughs> so you need to be leveraging uh, the relationship of whatever institution holds your money.